What's good, Ken Gonda? It's your boy, Yoshe Duke Jackson. Back at it again with a really, really great video. Make sure that you come in and like and subscribe on the channel. Today, man, I have a good buddy of mine. Um, I know I know him I know him personally. It was it was interesting how we met, but uh, over the last like 19 months, and he's really built a nice channel for himself. I'll let him explain who he is. Go ahead, brother. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, King Overtunda. Uh, Y'all seen me on King Ghana channel uh, plenty of times before, you know, me and Oshie, we linked up, uh, what, last year, I believe it was, and we just been, you know, connected ever since, and uh, lately, you know, we uh trying to, like, you know, work together and whatnot, there's a lot of fun things going on, so here I am, back on the channel. All right, all right, and brother, uh, for those people who don't know King Obatunda, man, um, you know, wh where are you from? You know, tell people where you're from, man, and what brought you uh in Africa to, to, to begin with uh, I'm from Virginia uh my hometown is Norfolk I live in Virginia Beach as well I came to Africa uh hoping to establish myself you know for uh building up my future for generational wealth as well as establishing a YouTube channel and uh gathering a lot of information for tourism and cultural experiences and sharing that information with people abroad and I'm currently in the process of doing both of those things right now I'm prioritizing YouTube right now because uh, I move around a bit and I travel a lot throughout the country of Uganda so I can gather a lot of information about Uganda and make this country more uh, attractive uh, for tourism. It's, it's kind of like a, a little known country. And more people know about Kenya or the people I've interacted with, they know more about Kenya or Tanzania or Rwanda, but they don't really know a whole lot about Uganda as far as good things. So, you know, I just travel around and make sure I find all those good things and uh, I share the information in a way that our people can understand. All right, all right. So you're African American brother living in Uganda, and yes, uh, yeah. we came actually to Uganda, I believe, like January 30th, 2020, at the same time. Uh -huh. uh, we we yeah, met. Right you, you, this year, huh? Yeah, you you recognized me. We was in Qatar. We we were in the flight together going back to yeah. Entebbe. Actually, that video was on your channel right now when you were yeah. coming on, and I was on the airplane with you. Um, Brother, since you've been there, you know, obviously I, I left last November. You stayed. Um, you you recently were in Tanzania, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, so how was how was that experience going out to uh, Tanzania? Man, it was actually uh, an eye opening experience and quite enlightening in the aspect that I learned a lot of uh, things about the African-American community and the Tanzanian community. And I learned a lot about, you know, why some uh, people they come to Tanzania with uh, this kind of mindset, you know, that this is just absolute paradise and this they're gonna be their permanent home forever. And then next thing you know, these guys are leaving in like two, three weeks or you know, a month or two months or whatever. And I wanted to understand why that was going on, as well as, you know, travel around a little bit, get a feel for TZ, because I've always wanted to go to that country. But after getting there, man, I learned a lot of stuff, yo. Okay, a lot of stuff. Cause you, you actually had called me on WhatsApp and, um. You know, there are a lot of African-Americans. I believe when we were in Uganda, uh, when I was there with you, it was a lot of uh, people going to the, at that time, either the, the Gambia or Tanzania. And because the Gambia was closed during COVID, I believe Tanzania was like the only country in Africa that didn't even require a test. You could just go there freely. Right. So many African-Americans started going to Tanzania. And, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I don't know if they were really researching it, but in your opinion, like, why do you feel, could you say something pretty interesting? You said that, you know, Uganda is more favorable for African-Americans moving to Uganda than Tanzania, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a pretty big it's claim. Why do you say that? Because um, Uganda, let's, let's talk about language, for example. Language okay. is actually a huge barrier that people run into when they first come to East Africa, especially if you don't do your research about East Africa, period. When you first come here, uh, Uganda is like known for it's uh, being like one of the best English speaking countries in East Africa, not throwing you know, any shade on any other country. But it's kind of a fact because other countries prefer to use their own uh, local languages, which is uh, Kiswahili in Kenya and Tanzania. So a lot of these uh, expats or immigrants or whatever you want to call yourself, they come out here to uh, East Africa and they can't even get over that biggest hurdle, which is the language or the cultural barrier. Because, you know, trying to get basic goods and services when people can't speak a lick of English or you can't speak their local language is a huge issue. You get what I'm saying? 
Like, yeah. let's say you're trying to find a, a housing or you want to get to your Airbnb or something like that. And you find that your taxi driver, your boating driver, your tuk tuk, everybody really has a, 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 they lean more towards their, their languages of Swahili versus English. So you find that you have a, a much more difficult time doing it. And like you said, it goes down to people not really researching the country before they get here. And also individuals who are here who don't talk about that stuff either. You know, they, they glamorize or over glamorize places without putting out that, that truth and knowledge. So when brothers and sisters come out here, you know, they, they can't handle it, you know? Mm hmm. Let me, you know, I know you, you met like some people like Mark Meets Africa and, uh, mm -hmm. and people like that. Um, what other challenges besides the language are they facing? You know, let's say in Tanzania that they might not face in Uganda. Uh, the length of stay, the okay. length of stay, from what I was told, has been adjusted. Um, people used to be able to get like these really long visas, student visas. They found ways of like finesse the system, basically. But there is a couple of individuals who got caught up in uh, finessing the system. I forgot uh, the names uh, exactly because I was told exactly who it was, but I forgot the names. But to make a long story short. People can't get those uh, year, two year, three year long student visas anymore. Now they get 90 day visas and they're running out of money really quickly. They have no backup plan. They came out here with this plan and this idea that they're going to stay here long term only to find out they can stay here for three months. And then they got to figure out how they can extend and they don't know where else to go. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's little things like that that they, they haven't prepared for yet. So. Let me ask you this, because you've been living in Uganda and, you know, you've had, I mean, even me, it, it took me a while to, you know, but I think the time I met you, that was like my seventh or eighth time coming. What has contributed to your success to be able to stay? Because you've been there like 18, 19 months now, um, yeah. this time. What's been able to yeah, contribute to your success home. for you staying in Uganda while other people are leaving Tanzania? Well, for one, I... Take very, um, like I, I pay attention to the cost of living in Uganda. First of all, you got to have a residual when you come out here. You can't just come out here on like a budget and try to manage off of that one budget. In my opinion, like you even said before on your other channels, you even mentioned that coming out here without extra money or without a way of making extra money is kind of pointless because you're going to run into a problem really quickly and you can't even overcome that. You're going to have to go right back to America, wherever it is you came from. So, what helped me out a lot being here was having a residual income from the military. Mm -hmm. Without okay. that, you know, I probably would have left a long time ago. You get what I'm saying? Because that's mm -hmm. extremely important, you know. That's that's basically the, the backbone, the foundation. Living within your means, that's what I mentioned, uh, you know, paying attention to the cost of living. And then, of mm -hmm. course, having that, uh, that residual income for the rest of my life, basically. Without that, you know, like I said, I would have ran into a lot of hurdles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let me uh, let me ask you this because there is a bigger African American community that's like in Tanzania um, mm -hmm. than than like let's say because Uganda I don't know that many African Americans in Uganda I mean I know there's you yeah there was another brother that was from Ohio uh, those are mm -hmm. only two or three guys that I knew but um like there are a lot more of them out there um. Do you think that the, a lot of a lot of them are, have, are are leaving because they just haven't planned for certain things? They don't have the residuals. Is that what you think? In my opinion, yes, and also because uh, they didn't like they didn't expect a lot of the problems to to happen when they do. Like you know, right. being in Africa, period, is it can be unforgiving at times, and a lot of us we have this uh, mentality of entitlement to a degree because now we're woke. We're into African things, you know, into the Orishas and all this other stuff. And we come here with this mentality that, you know, these are our brothers and our sisters, you know, things are going to be more easier for us to, to manage. And that's not always the case. You know, it, this, this Africa is a country, or excuse me, Africa is a continent <laughs> consisting of many countries. And each country has its own way of dealing with foreigners. In particular, East Africa has its own way of dealing with foreigners. Tanzania, in particular, they have set up many rules to accommodate foreigners, but you have to be on your P's and Q's when you come out here. You can't just come out here with no plan in any way, shape, or form. You got to come out here and hustle. You got to have a backbone when you come out here. And you also have to have thick skin as well, because ain't nobody out here going to hold your hand to get nothing done. You understand? It's up to you. And I think that's what a lot of people uh, do when they come out here. They have no connections. They don't know other people that are here. They find out things too late. You know, they run into too many problems. 
at one time and they end up just, you know, getting overwhelmed and just deciding to just leave and just speaking mad trash on East Africa or, or that country in particular. You know, when, when it was their own doing or not doing that caused them to be in the problem that they were in the brand. Let, let's talk a lot about this because you know the first person that's told me about this African American entitlement that's going on um in, in Africa. What do you what do you mean by when you say African American entitlement? So a lot of uh brothers and sisters, you know, once we start to find our roots and things like that. A lot of times, some of us, we, we come here with this mentality that we're just going to blend in and we're going to be one of the African uh, local people. That's not always the case. They'll call you your brother, but you're still a foreigner. You understand at the end of the day, you might get treated by some people as a brother or as a sister, but at the end of the day, the whole country will recognize you as a foreigner. The government recognizes you as a foreigner. So you, a lot of us come here with this mentality that, you know, Africans are supposed to know about our problems. They're supposed to know about slave trade and what we come from. They're supposed to know about the conditions um, that we grew up in, in, in the diaspora, things like that. And vice versa, like a lot of us don't even know shit about Africa, oh, excuse me. A lot of us don't know a lot about Africa, you know, so we can't come here with that mentality that, you know, it's supposed to be, everything is supposed to be like handed to us or not just handed to us, but everything is so much easier to attain just because of our black skin. That's not mm -hmm. the case at all. Okay. Well, you know me, man. I'm a big Uganda fan, just like you are. And um, I see a mm -hmm. lot of people, um, like, you know, the, it's the Gambia that's out there. It's popular. It's Ghana. Um, I think Uganda might be, like, top six or seven for African-Americans relocating. What are some of the things that you feel that – I know you went to Tanzania for about a week, Tanzania, but what are some of the things that you feel like Uganda can offer – um, the diaspora community that maybe Tanzania cannot, besides the uh, ease of language. Uh, well, besides the ease of language, uh, other things that Uganda can offer is a lot of untapped potential that is already available here. Like there are a lot of things. Like for example, I was just having a conversation with a brother about uh, opening a boys and girls club here because mm -hmm. um, youth centers are really vital to the development of communities in these countries. And the fact that there are no real youth centers around, it kind of like uh, discourages a lot of youth to uh, want to do uh, out, like to go out of their neighborhoods or to do things. So I was talking to other foreigners and I was saying like, you know, instead of bringing NGOs and things like that here, why don't we bring something more constructive here to Uganda? Because, you know, we can take things that we have in Western countries, we can bring them things back here and make it more constructive. Uganda is a place where a lot of that hasn't happened yet. So there's uh, a lot of opportunity for that development, for you to make, you know, if you want to make profit of it, that's what you can do, you know. But there's other opportunities here that are basically untapped into, you know. And I feel like other countries like Kenya and Tanzania, they're they're more up to date on a lot of these things. So it's not that it mm. would be easier. It's probably not within your interest. If you're if you're coming here to and make investments and save money at the same time, and you want to have longevity in East Africa, I think Uganda would be the best place for you instead mm -hmm. of Kenya or Tanzania, only because you have the opportunity to be the first uh, at doing what it, whatever it is you want to do. You right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, let me let me ask you also, because, you, you know, you talked about having connections and, uh, you know, like, you know, we spent some time, you know, um, in, in East Africa uh, when I was when I was there in, in Uganda. How important is like, um, knowing people when you when you first move to, to to Uganda or knowing somebody or knowing somebody in the local community, how how vital has that been for you? Extremely, extremely vital. If you don't know anybody, you had best do your research as best as possible in the country and have a solid, solid plan and stick to it. You need to be a seasoned veteran when it comes to traveling other countries that uh, don't really speak uh, your language. Because not having a network is, is it's very difficult to move around in these places, as I mentioned before. So for me, I mean, it helped me out so much. There are times where I run into a lot of unnecessary situations and I may need, you know, uh, a little bit of assistance in whatever aspect it may be. You know, man. Yeah, I may need a little bit of assistance in whatever aspect it may be. Reaching out to someone who's already here, who may have been in that situation, who could offer me advice or something of that nature. And they're right here within the same country it's extremely important, you know, that helped me out so much. And when I went to TZ, I, I actually had that same thing happen to me. 
when I first got there, I reached out to some people um, who I was connected with already who live in Tanzania and Dar es Salaam, and they helped me maneuver around the, uh, the cities and showed me a lot of things around the cities. They provided me with a lot of information about the city as well. You know, without that, I would have had to learn it on my own, and I would have had less content to provide to people. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you, because, you know, um, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I talk about it all the time uh, mm -hmm. with certain people. If you had to do your move to Uganda again, knowing what you know now, what mm -hmm. were some of the things that you would do differently? Like, let's say, for example, you know, before you came this time and when, when I went, went with, with me on the, on the airplane, what were some of the things that you would do different? Uh, I wouldn't have gotten married at that time, yo. <laughs> I wouldn't have went through with that, yo. That's number one, cuz. Um, okay. Another thing I would have done differently is I would have bought some um, equipment sooner. Like my drone, for example, I would have bought other things like that a lot sooner. And I would have used my um, those equipment to provide the business that I'm doing now. Because I feel like if I had have done it earlier, I would have much more clientele and I'd be well well off established with my business uh, now versus how you know how things are after all this lockdown and everything. Other than that, um, I don't really have no regrets about things that I've done or didn't do. I just think that, um, of course, having more money that always would help, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's about it, you know. Just getting more equipment and use it, utilizing it sooner, in my opinion, because I really didn't make a whole lot of mistakes with just timing. I came here at a, at a difficult time in Uganda. You know, if I had came, if I had met you all the years ago that you've been here, I think that things would have been much different. You know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, man, because, you know, you're in Uganda during the, the COVID season. Um, mm -hmm. It's been, you know, lockdown, lifting the lockdown and coming back into the lockdown. Um, you know, how has that affected the the uh, local economy? And, and also for African-Americans or diasporans that want to move um, during this time, you know, what, what would you say be, you know, due to how Uganda is right now due to the, the new variant and all that? Um, well, a lot of areas were affected in a, in a negative way, but also in that same uh, sentence, a lot of areas were also affected in a positive way. For example, individuals who invested in online businesses, their online businesses actually had done better during COVID versus them having a shop. Because a lot of shops, you know, you got to pay rent and things like that. And not opening your shop and still having to pay rent hurt a lot of business owners, you know. So that's one of the things that, you know, uh, came out of uh, this whole COVID thing. And I don't know, maybe, how, how could I say it? COVID actually, it was so inconvenient because it was so abrupt and it just happened out of nowhere. If people actually had a plan for it, you know, things would have been a little bit different in my opinion. But this whole thing, just it was just so abrupt. And then how the country handled the, the COVID situation, that's one thing like you guys, if you plan to come here to Uganda, you have to pay attention to how countries operate. You understand, like, as far as politics, as far as uh, outbreaks and things like that, your whole life could just be shut down without any warning or without any knowledge, you know, due to uh, government restrictions or whatever the case may be. And if you don't plan ahead for that, you know, you're going to be stuck out of luck. And I've seen a lot of individuals here who were here temporarily, came on holiday or something like that, got stuck during lockdown and couldn't couldn't leave. And financially didn't plan ahead for that, you know, right. so that's a huge, huge issue, you know, so if you plan on coming here to do investments, I definitely would check to see the environment and how the country is operating as far as how they're handling this outbreak and what they potentially plan to do for the next five to 10 years to recover from this, because the economy mm -hmm. has been affected in a negative way uh, because of COVID, because a lot of businesses have been shut down. And, you know, Uganda is a country where a lot of individuals are entrepreneurs. They are their own business owners. They got to hustle for this or hustle for that. And not having that movement and not being able to move around freely because of COVID restrictions, um, it, it hurt their businesses in a lot of ways. You know, I myself wasn't able to. Uh, I wasn't able to move around to a lot of places because certain things were shut down. Restaurants were shut down. Bars were shut down. So other content that I wanted to provide on my channel, I couldn't provide that. So I had to improvise. You understand? That's that's key to having that backup plan. And having an imagination if you don't have those things you're going to be stuck out here honestly let me ask you uh you know because if you're a person that doesn't have like a pension you know um 
like me and my, you know, me, I, I, I didn't have that. I mean, I, I was on YouTube and stuff, but I had to use the situation that I use now where I like, I'm leaving, I'm staying and then mm -hmm. I'm coming back. Um, and you met my, you met John, you met people on the King Gunner team before, obviously. So, you know, I had to establish yeah. that now I leave and then I come back and then I leave and then I come back and I leave and I come back. That, that method has been okay. Uh, for me, um, what do you recommend for a person that doesn't have a pension and needs to earn um, before they actually make the move? What, what advice would you give that person? Like, yo, I want to move to Uganda, but I'm still trying to work on certain things. What would you tell them if they didn't have a pension and they still need to earn? It, 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 you know, what I would, would you say you have multiple hustles, have multiple hustles, have multiple ways of sourcing income in some way, shape or form, whether you're a vlogger, blogger, picture taker or whatever you do, have multiple hustles, multiple ways of making money. When you come out here, that's that's how the environment is. Every Ugandan that I know has multiple ways of making money. They don't just sit on their hands. The ones that you sit on their hands just lack imagination in my opinion. But for you guys that come out here, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Have multiple ways of uh, making money, you understand? Whether it be something online that you sell online, getting some crafts and flipping them, drop shipping, whatever it is you want to do, do that, you know, invest in Forex, you know, Bitcoins or whatever. There's companies that buy and sell Bitcoins and things like that. Just have multiple streams of income, basically. That's always what's going to save you. You can't depend on one thing. Even if it's something very small, if it's a residual that you can, you know, something that adds up every month, then that'll help you, you know, just live within your means and have definitely multiple sources of income. Let me let me ask you this, because I, um, you know, some of the guys will say, Brother, why you didn't go to Ghana? Why Gambia? Because I was getting that also about Uganda. My, my brother, George Macon, who's been on the channel a few times, he was trying to talk me out of Uganda. He's trying to tell me I need to go move to Ghana. Um, mm. But I stayed in, in, in Uganda and um, I, I, I've, I've been in love with the country ever since. Why do you pick Uganda over, you know, places like Kenya, Ghana, you know, Nigeria, you know, countries where, you know, African-Americans have a little bit more uh cultural connection with you know maybe like liberia why do you pick uganda when we don't have really a big connection with uganda as african americans well one reason is um when i first came here i loved the country a lot and i stayed for like almost a year within that amount of time i didn't really see a reason to you know nothing really pushed me away from uganda during that time so i just wanted to stay you know longer just to find out more about it about the country and the longer I stayed, the more I just, you know, got more curious about Uganda, basically. There is no real reason why I'm anchored here, you know. It's more or less because I stayed long enough to have an understanding of the place. And now I, I have invested the time to, you know, stay here and have longevity here, basically. Like, I understand the language. I understand the culture. I understand the political problems. I understand the social problems. Um, I've been to the village, I've been to the ghettos, I've been to the rich areas. I've been around and I'm, I'm pretty much seasoned with Uganda to a degree. There's still other things that I have to see and that's one of the reasons why I want to stay here for longer because it's like I don't really like to have to keep moving around so much, you know, bouncing from one country, this country, this country, this country to find a home. You get what I'm saying? Like I, I feel like I already found a home in maybe in the next 10 or 20 years if uh, things change and I'll move away. But for mm -hmm. now, I've already invested the time in understanding this country. Right. So I don't really see a point in just up and leaving. You know, I'll visit Ghana and all the other places, but I, I just kind of like it here. You know, it's like right. going somewhere. If, if the shoe fits where, you know, if it ain't broke, don't right. break it. You know, it's the, I don't have to go to Ghana or Nigeria or something like that. I can stay here. You know, I can go anywhere really if I wanted to, but I just like mm -hmm. being here. So let me, let me ask you this because, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people complain about, scams in ghana you know people getting put into COVID um quarantine hotel uh, jail sales and stuff i heard about that land scams in gambia and i mean you know what has your been experience because i mean obviously all foreigners can face these things in uganda i've had some problems here and there nothing really 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 major i faced a lot of little problems but what you know what what like when you when you hear other people talk about being uh, targeted because they're African American are being scammed and stuff like that. Do you do you feel that that has been also part of your experience in Uganda, or you don't really see it that way? 
No, I don't see it that way. Uh, I don't feel like I ever got targeted because I was an African American. I would say I got I would get, I got targeted because I was a foreigner. You understand? But if you're naive and you fall into those those traps of people trying to get you know get money out of you, then you know that's you're just gonna get scammed. But those scams can happen to you anywhere. You know, you can go to America and get sold a house. You know, and come to find out, you got squatters in the house or or the house is you know falsely listed or whatever the case may be. So it's all about you being sharp and dotting your eyes across your T's, basically. You can't just come out here and start making investments, things like that, and not doing your background research, not researching individuals, uh, not bringing lawyers uh, present during um, business deals and things like that. You got to really move carefully when you come out to these places. You can't just, that goes into that entitlement thing that I was talking about earlier, that whole one love and that woke shit. Like people come out here with that woke mentality and thinking that it's all love and thinking that, Folks ain't gonna take advantage of you, bro. You got mad money. Folks out here don't. Not. I'm not saying like this is so poor and, and desperate like that, but I mean like if you go to an area where you're dealing with like a, a land broker and this this land broker is just being mad sketchy and you're not really doing your research. You put money in this guy's hands, and next thing you know, he didn't disappeared and bought him a brand new Mercedes and, and built him a whole house. You get what I'm saying? That just comes from the individual is being naive and not uh, doing their background research like it's supposed to. So I, I highly suggest and recommend when y'all come out here, lawyer up, you will get you a lawyer, make sure this individual is trustworthy and have this individual double check everything, every document, every piece of paper. If you go and buy land, check the land titles, check the uh, ancestral history on the land, make sure somebody grandma and them ain't coming back to claim the land, you know, because that happens too. People with foreigners get right. sold land that belongs to this person's second and third cousin, and they didn't inherit the land and all this other stuff. So, you know, it's it's always some crazy stuff going on like that, but it's not specific to your your skin color or your uh, nationality or something like that. It's the fact that you're a foreigner and you got money. That's all it is. If you fall for the trap, then you just easy like that. Right, 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 right. No, that's that's definitely true. And these things happen. But let me ask you one last question, man. You know, because you're a, a younger mm -hmm. brother, man, you know, 30 and a, a 30 uh, under the age of 30. Uh, that's I'll be 30, in a couple months. 30 in a couple months. OK, happy birthday. All right. Um, yeah, so, you know, you know me, I'm 40. So we are you know, this is a, like our, our, you know, prime working years. Right. And um, mm -hmm. so it's a very uh, sensitive time and trying to build yourself and stuff like that. Um, I, I know there are a lot of people that are coming from the continent, you know, uh, that are already retired. So they have a little bit of a more of a safety net. But for younger people that want to move to Africa um, and, you know, the continent is kind of, you know, with, with Uganda, it's a little uncertainty. Because, I, I mean, I was there the first COVID and it was actually worse than it is now. I mean, at least yeah. I believe so, because yeah, yeah, Muslims, he worse. wouldn't even let you get on. It was worse. Yeah. He wouldn't even let you drive on the street if you didn't have, if it wasn't mm -hmm. one of his cars. I remember because, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't see it for like two months. But, um, but you, you know, it's a sensitive, a sensitive time. And then obviously, you know, with, with that being said, would you still recommend, you know, ma you know, making the jump you know, in the prime earning years or basically doing what some people say? Well, I'm going to just wait until I retire and then come to Africa. What, what do you what do you think? Well, I honestly don't believe it. it's up to an age. I, I believe it's up to financial responsibility. If you get a certain amount of, like, let's say you get $20,000 when you're 19 years old and you, you want to come to Africa, I'm not going to tell you not to come, but I'm going to tell you to be smart about it. I'm going to tell you to do your research. I'm going to tell you not to bring all that money over here and just start spending bread like it's nothing. Because, of course, at, at that young age, you're going to want to party or you're going to want to do things irresponsibly. But I've met a young brother, you know, Mark East Africa, for example. That boy done went and got him a whole business set up. He, he got other stuff that he uh, is going to unveil very soon. He got a lot of things that he's working with, uh, networking with locals and establishing um, his own businesses so he can, you know, sustain himself. So he didn't just come out here just in the wind like it's nothing, you know. He came out here with a sense of direction, basically. And for the older uh, folks who want to come out here, too, I mean, sure, why not? Come out here with your pension, you know, your, your, your money that you've been saving up and come out here to invest. But I just uh, want to mention that, you know, for older folks, I think Uganda would be a, a better location for a lot of older people because it's a place where it's a very relaxed environment. And it's one of those areas where you can invest and collect your money slowly, slowly. Because things here in Uganda move much slower than other countries such as Kenya or Tanzania. 
So mm -hmm. I, I feel like, you know, a lot of older people were more probably like you kind of a little bit more because of that, uh, that, you know, situation. But young people who like that fast paced uh, lifestyle, you know, uh, Nairobi is a place for you to be. I'm not saying Kampala isn't, you know, Kampala was like that before COVID hit. So hopefully oh, since everything opened up, Kampala it was crazy. Yeah, Kampala's going to be booming again. So, yeah, you know, right up. now, I feel like, you know, a lot of older people want to come out here really enjoy uh, Uganda. It's a very relaxed environment right now. Let me, let me, go ahead. Let me, go ahead. let me ask one last thing because, you know, one of the things that, you know, we, that we've done, and I remember when you told me I was uh, in Uganda, he was like, yeah, man, uh, this poultry farmer thing is, is popping out here. I was like, what? I was like, man, mm. you don't want to get no money on no damn eggs. Remember I was telling you about that? Yeah, like, man. No, man, I'm telling you, eggs is cool. I'm like, man, shut up, dude. Like, ain't nobody get no money doing that. And then I was yeah, like, man. then I met Farm Up, the YouTube channel, and in Bali, yeah. I was like, bro, Kingo Batunda was right. Like, yo, farming yeah. is really the truth. And that's something yeah. that I didn't know you was the first person that told me. And I was like mm -hmm. roasting you, like, bro, what you talking about? You want to do eggs, bro? We from we, we from the states, man. We don't do no eggs, bro. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And 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 I now understand how big of an opportunity agriculture is. Um, I know you're mm -hmm. into that, and you you want to do some things there. What are the opportunities mm -hmm. for the, the diaspora, the African American community in farming in, in, in Uganda? Livestock farming is a booming industry right now in UG. I mean, it doesn't really matter what kind of livestock you get into. You can get into goats, you can get into chickens, you can get into fish, open up a fishery, uh, you can get into pig farming. All of these areas are really, really great for uh, um, for earning residuals. And livestock, man, the industry has just fully opened up. I've seen like it grow in the last couple of years that I've been here. And in particular, that chicken industry, like there's a company, it's called Ken Chick, I believe. They um, sell baby chickens and they sell other uh, items for uh, Raising your own chickens as well, helping you get established. Uh, I believe they sell like incubators and things like that. Bro, this industry is booming. Even if you don't want to invest in chickens itself, selling equipment for chickens, selling chicken feed, there's many different areas around that you can invest in to uh, get into the livestock industry. You understand? So it doesn't actually mean that you have to come here to raise your own animals. You can come in here and get into the machining part of it and, um, and, and import machines from other countries to uh, uh, maintain the upkeep of these animals or the livestock and your farm and things of that nature. You know, so there's different aspects to get into it, you know. All right, brother. I do thank you so much, man, for, you know, coming in. Usually we have done our, it's our first interview over the internet. Typically we do them in person. But uh, tell people, yeah. man, why they should subscribe to the King of Batunda YouTube channel. Yeah, yo, so you guys, you can follow me on uh, YouTube, King of Batunda, or you can follow me on Instagram. Um, if you do, uh, just to let you guys know that my information that I provide is uh, more so like I'm trying to promote Uganda in a way that's very appealing to everyone uh, all over the diaspora, but mainly our community, which is the black community in the diaspora, because I want to see more of our people come out here because we can build generational wealth together. And it's a lot of money. It's a lot of food for us out here to eat. It's a lot of opportunities for us out here to do. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can get into. And even if you don't come to Uganda, coming to East Africa will build us in this East African community so we can have a presence here as well. A lot of us already go to West Africa. We already have a major presence in West Africa. So it's time for us to do the same thing here in East Africa as well. So if you guys follow my channel, you'll be able to see a lot of exciting things about Uganda. And not just my channel, but the King Garden channel as well. Because these guys get into a lot of business things. And you see a lot of business opportunities that you can get into. I do more cultural things so you guys have a cultural understanding of what it's like to be in this environment and then you can uh basically have a better understanding of how to live and maintain your gun all right so guys thank you so much for coming on support our brother king over the first comment pinned to the top and as you know keep it real king on forever we out <laughs>